we wanted to talk about our trip to Tennessee earlier this month. We um, have been very busy, and so October came in with a lot of things, and so we haven't really had time to sit down and just discuss what we saw, um, what we feel like we need to do here, and what we recommend others do around us. Um, from what we experienced and the people that we talked to. So, we started off simply by getting donations from locals around us and from local businesses and churches. Um, we simply felt led to do that to... Well, we often talk about being a... Um, a community, knowing who your people are, having your people, and uh, so we didn't just go down on a whim, we didn't uh, go down to generic drop points, uh, we actually reached out to friends that we have that live in eastern Kentucky, friends that we have that live in eastern Tennessee, and they were all good, um, by God's grace they were uh, protected. And, um, and then we had someone that, that follows uh, some of our farm page stuff. We have the dogs and the kids. And they, uh, and they said, yeah, look, the French Broad River's in our backyard, and we need help. So we went to them. Uh, we, we kept them as our contact. <laughs> and we had a... Uh, you know, a conversation, and they were able to connect us with a church that was across the road and establish our own drop point, which I think was also in God's providence uh -huh. uh, because of our personal connection and, and our uh, utilization of the church. We, um, the donations and that which we set up was not eligible for confiscation uh, by FEMA or Red Cross or anything so and we know directly who those what what all those donations who they went to um, we were able to have conversations with people that came to pick up um, those donations and so we knew that they were going to good use yes so we loaded up and to say that we collected donations was a uh, is um, somewhat generic because in all honesty we said hey we're coming and uh, we made the decision on a Sunday night um, I did put the word out to a number of, of people in churches uh, because I know there are a number of people whose heart was to serve and to give and so we gave an outlet for them but it was so short notice so we literally just, um, we took off and we had uh, some community members that were directly around us, followers of the farm page that, that jumped in and members of our church that, that just pulled through and, mm -hmm. and donated massive amounts. We filled a, we, well, we actually ended up filling uh, multiple trailers. We were only able to take the one and um, and that was in a 24-hour period, and we were we jetted out of town, and uh, a lot of people, you know, just gave personally, um, and and we took specific items. There were things that, for one, that I know are necessary in disaster situations. A lot of clean out and muck out type situations, as and. and uh, so we, we got a lot of those items, and then we got a lot of personal care items, and then some foodstuffs, too. And, and for uh, animals, livestock. And animals. And animals, like yeah, too. We had a uh, request for some gasoline and some feed. Uh, so we took it, and uh, we loaded up the whole trailer and took off, and, and uh, we met these individuals. And it was so encouraging because, you know, our friends that we have there, and you know who you are, um to see the way that that they or you if you end up watching uh, was able to develop community and, and and they weren't worried about themselves they were more worried about their neighbors yeah we we yeah. were worried about them and wanted to take care of them and uh 
and they instead were more concerned with these people that were situated around them that were in greater need and that's the way community works now i know there's a, a place to be thankful for the large organizations that can sit up and can do things um, but there's a necessary cooperation because where the community level interdependence fails those large organizations fail uh, but where community interdependence succeeds it they do well with or without the help of larger organizations. Um, so that's where I, I think that there's some incredible lessons uh, to be learned, mm -hmm. even as we think about preparedness and things like that. And you can't be prepared for everything. They, uh, in the mountains, the last thing that you want to prepare for is flooding. It doesn't make sense, and not just flooding, but but hurricanes, and it's just uh, it, it's kind of weird. That's a once in a thousand year thousand mm -hmm. storm, they said, and we all have our own speculations as to what uh, incited that, or or uh, to what we may attribute the development of that storm and other storms like it, but. Um, still you, you got to think about that that there's man-made uh hurdles that have to be crossed and survived frankly yeah. whenever protocols are going to inhibit your ability to get and do what what you need to for your family uh we might need to think about that we need to think about uh, what, how will we communicate? How will we move? A lot of the people that we took items to were in a location. They didn't have cars. And if they did, maybe their car was swept away. I mean, there's, there's so no. So we did, um, we went to Newport. We went to, uh, um, well, not. It was right so out, was Bridgeport. Out, Bridgeport, I'm sorry. Bridgeport, which is. Uh, but it's outside of. Of Newport. Of Newport. And so we did see a large distribution center as we were going through yeah. so a lot of the ones that you see there's a lot of people that's helping and donating in newport yes we went right past that and that's also one that um a lot of people were concerned about with regard to you know fema and red cross assuming control but even so regardless and even before we were there before uh, any of that occurred they were moving in um, we saw a lot of like the National Guards, we saw we did see them st stopping people and redirecting them, uh, turning them around, and uh, we were fortunate, you know, Rachel prayed the whole way in, and, um, and we got through and got the goods to, who, to the people that needed them, and, and the people that, that got them were taking them on foot back to their homes. They were not able to make it to a Newport drop mm -hmm. point or things like that, and, and so... And these are people that were right, they were living right beside the river. Yeah, we were right on the river. Um, and and so, again, where we were located, we were able to drop. They were able, again, to walk on foot. They didn't need a vehicle. Um, and they got much-needed water, much-needed food, clean out, first aid, things like that. And I don't think a lot of people were considering those who were not able to get to these distribution centers. And they did, they had massive amounts of water. I mean, just, just stalks and piles yeah. of it. Unfortunately, I think that's some of what is, and I'm still, where I'm still hearing, like in North Carolina, water. They're still without water. Water, water, water. They need water. They need water to drink, water to cook, water to clean. Uh, they need all kinds of water, and that's one that we're, we're praying alongside, uh, you know, our brother David Mudd at, at uh, God's Outreach that uh, as he's trying to, we're praying the doors are opened for a tanker, uh, a semi, like a tanker uh, trailer to be, mm. to be able to get potable water across the country like that. So, um, so that's something you can be thinking and praying about. Um, but they're needing it, and yet that's some of the items that I think FEMA and Red Cross are able they are able to uh, take and relocate different places or or use. 
which that's for better and worse because they need it right there. They're um, unable, in my opinion, to adequately distribute it uh, because there's so many that can't go to those drop points. And so, well, and um, to me, when I saw just the, um, of course, there were a lot of people using the tank trucks and things like that. Um, for water and they did have water set up there was a couple of churches I saw that had water out front where people were coming and filling up their tanks but you never consider you have a plan a b c d for your water because um, a lot of these people may have had plans but it wasn't enough yeah, so thinking what, what Rachel's talking about is we all know water is, is, uh, is a, man, it's top priority because uh, you need water to survive. So what are you going to do for water? So if our water is shut off, if you're on community water, do you have backup? Is there a well? Is there, are you collecting water? You, is, where would you purchase water? How will you store the water? Um what if electricity fails uh, do, the, do the pumps to the wells and the things that you have in place is that going to work what happens if your water store is contaminated how will you purify do you know what you need to know uh, that you might filter or distill uh, that water or how will you collect other water um, and well and I want to say too a lot of these people have if you are a prepper and you, you have things put back a lot of the food supplies that you have in those instances require water to re rehydrate yeah so even your food like your dehydrated food that's right you got to have water to do it you got to have water to uh, to cook to clean to do everything and um so it is it's it's uh it's central to our our life and um so you all need to be thinking about that too if these people never, never could have guessed that this was going to happen to them. Um, and even talking to the individuals that we were able to help, they have lived in that area all of their life, and they've they've never seen this. They've never yeah. seen this type of devastation, this type of flooding. And so... <clears throat> in an area, but again, you know, there's other areas to where... You know, in Georgia, where you know I said we had excess of goods donated, so mm -hmm. we were able to partner with God's Outreach that I've already mentioned, and um, and make up another semi load. We had a, a few, I don't know, maybe three or four more pallets that we had donated, um, and and were able to partner to get to fill a semi and get to Georgia, an area that was getting less less attention and less help. Uh, but water was not what they needed. I mean, they we took some, but but that wasn't the central need that they had. They had water and their purification systems were up. They did, weren't dealing with the contamination that they're dealing with in North Carolina. So uh, you can't just say water, I got my water figured out, I'm a water guru, and it be done. You have to, uh, you gotta think about everything. And, and keep in mind, you, you can't do it all. No. So you've got to have the community. What's your fail safe, you know, and well, it's not just that, but it was so, I feel like some of it was just so localized. Somebody a mile down the road may not have been as um, impacted by the things that happened. You know, as far as the flooding, they may have been without electricity and things, but their house didn't, yeah. you know, float away or there was no mudslides, things like that. So it is important for you to have things put back and put away because your neighbor a half a mile, a mile down the road, may be um, impacted by natural disaster or something else. And I guarantee that if something happened to my neighbor and I had the stuff put back and put away, I would make that trek. I would make that mile, two mile trip yes. to make sure that they had what they needed. And to think, who who is that that will that will care for you when your food stores? You you might have the preparations, mm -hmm. but those preparations could be wiped away. Then who Who's will you take rely care of you? on? Right. So this is why we say community, 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 family. Um, 
be thinking about that. Listen, we're in an era, uh, hyperinflation and economy is driving people to decisions to move across the country to change their jobs, not because of how lucrative a career that that provides, but because of the community that it places them in. It's time to think about that. It's time to think about are you where you need to be in relation to your parents? Are you where you're, you need to be in relation to your children? Are they where they need to be? Are, uh, you know, maybe is there extended family or, or, or very close or like-minded friends? Um, and so you really ought to think about that and, and start to find that way or place wherein you can grow some roots and establish a system, a network. Well, because just solid relationships. Yeah, solid relationships. And so, because it just doesn't happen. Yes, yes, there's wonderful people who would bring you cookies to when when you're new to the neighborhood. There's, there's fun activities that you can find in any town. That's not the substance, the essence of the relationship that we're talking about. We're talking about people who care for the eternal souls of your spouse and your children, the people who, who uh, check on you and want to hear your voice on a weekly basis, and people who uh, they love you as much as they love themselves. Mm-hmm. They're, they're those people, and, and friends, there's not that many people like that. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean uh, that... Oh, all these people that you know aren't good people. I'm saying that in most cases, people have not sort of formulated or built those relationships up in that way. That sort of a relationship has to be fostered. Yes. And so if you're thinking in preparations, and I don't mean in, in being just um, useful, but you should if you love someone. uh then and you're setting your affections on them, then you're employing your faculties for their good. Mm-hmm. So you foster that relationship and and that's what you're seeing that's succeeding. Despite all of the failures with the best intentions, understanding that um, government organizations, if they are intended for good, uh are unable to do all of the good they intend. Uh, The big organizations, good organizations, are, there's only so much they can do. Uh, Us coming from out of town and and sending a semi-load to different different towns or cities where they have a larger distribution center, it is inadequate for, for what the scripture would call the least of these. That takes community. That takes individuals who know the ones no one else is thinking about. Mm-hmm. And uh, you got to have those people. Um, listen, the, the saddest uh, thing is to hear those stories of the person who was left alone, the person who was forgotten, the, the you know, there's displays of this all over. With the natural disaster, you're seeing those, there's... You know, if there's, you know, situations of unclaimed bodies or names that no one has given mention of or asked their whereabouts, um, you see the uh, the sanctity that surrounds the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier in D.C. You see uh, that, that terrible situation where someone is left alone. It's, it's the worst sort of punishment for the most heinous criminal is to be put in and left in solitary confinement. Uh, it's that's a, a type of torture, according to our our own uh, you know standards of war, um, and it's the very first uh, condition that is uh, that must be met in the existence of man, that it's not good for man to be alone. Mm -hmm. And so for a man to end that way, for a woman to end that way, anyone to be left alone, uh, that loneliness is, uh, it it cuts to the depths of the soul. 
and frankly, it's what drives to even the terrible things. Uh, you know, there was a headline we see, which, we, you know, this has been something that's been talked about for a little bit now with the development of the artificial intelligence, uh, girlfriend, boyfriend, these personalities, and how wicked this is. That that's a This is loneliness that drives that. And so um, there was one young man that... I guess what was the headline? Something stemming from following his relationship to an AI girlfriend and he committed suicide. Um, so there is no remedy to loneliness except for the community that we're talking about that has its epitome, its climax in marriage and in family and, and then that blessing just grows and expands mm -hmm. from there. So, um, you know, it's a lot. That's that's a. There's always a lot to to take in, and and a lot of really great thinkers that are assessing uh, everything that's gone on in this disaster. There will be another one. It seems that the crises are are manifold. They're being built up and, and multiplied before our eyes, and I think there's going to be more. I think that there are bad actors. I think there's things that we ought to think about with regard to spiritual warfare and, and, and you know, conspiratorial uh, intentions, and, and, uh, and I think there's all sorts of things to consider on that front, but... but uh, how will you be equipped for every good work? And uh, and so I think there's there's definitely a way. So um, if anyone has any questions, you know, feel free to ask or leave a comment and and share some of your experience. What what did you learn through any of this? Uh, have you started to do anything different in your own home uh, because of something you've learned? That's that's it doesn't. There's a way in which it doesn't matter what you know if you're not putting that into service, into right. work. So, so you've got to stockpile and uh, and look, we love the garden and we do all that. But you know, Rachel loads up on canned goods as well. Whenever mm -hmm. you know you've got an economy and you got a budget, um, accessibility is important. You know, if the garden didn't produce. Uh, you know, and your tomatoes didn't do well, then by golly, go go get some canned goods or find someone that does have excess. And well, but, when you're when you're hungry and you're in a um, a bad situation, it's not going to matter <laughs> yeah. what brand you have, if it's considered crunchy or not. Um, food is going to be food in a in a bad situation. Yeah, um, so, so you, it's not. There's certain compromises that yeah, you can there's make. There's certain compromises that you can make, especially when you're putting back things, um, and especially those things that need to be shelf when, stable for well, a long time. That's right. But when you have time, when you're preparing and you're thinking in advance, you can mitigate those things. If you're avoiding certain preservatives, if you're avoiding certain things, well you stockpile on the good things then, right? Mm -hmm. You you so you have this ability if you're if you're able. If you're able if to you're mitigate able. what things that you want if there's certain mm -hmm. dietary concerns or restrictions, which we all have. Um so you know that's definitely something to think about. I just know that the whole situation has changed my perspective. And moving forward with even our home, our homestead, um, setting back, putting away. Um, it, it's not, it's less about us and more outward focus as far as our neighbors, people, our community. Um, and, and I think we should take the reaction that so many had to this and use that as an example. Uh, yeah. Just the outpouring of just support and dedication and dropping everything and the amount of people that did that is just, I hope it serves an example um, to those, <laughs> that, to the rest of the United States when it comes yeah. to Appalachia. disaster. Appalachia has some things to teach us exactly. in the rest of, in the, rest of the, the world, so yeah. um, it's a really good, good community. 
So that's just our perspective and, and views on what happened. Again, like Vance said, if you have questions or I want to I want to know what you all are doing now in light of of this. Has has it changed your perspective? Yeah. Has it changed your um and don't don't Your forget focus. about them either. Now these people, they're still. It's gonna be. It's, it's gonna, gonna be, be years. Year, yeah, years. It's gonna be years. They're rebuilding, and they're they're still. Yeah, months and years, perhaps, of dealing with. <laughs> Poe. Po. Come on, puppy dog. Sorry. Sorry. So this is going to be a long time dealing with insurance. Uh, issues and land struggles what I hear uh, still a lot of things uh, having to be very careful the way that we navigate that because of the government's involvement um, if, if you're still looking to donate and we can assist and try to guide you to some people that are that are moving that direction mm -hmm. that and probably will be there and, for yeah for, in the next then, several months then we we'll uh, be then yeah, don't don't uh, hesitate to reach out. Uh, I know I I didn't hesitate to look for those uh, those connections, you know, to find churches, um, and and again, this is where I think it's something that would have been automatic at one time, uh, and is less so because so much even of the church giving is programmatic, and. And is not uh, there's not a lot of room for the for the organic community, in in uh, local church budgets, and so that's something to consider as well. You know, if you're involved in church, to think about what is your local outreach and your local, you know, what sort of resources, you know, how are you preparing to help others, uh, mm -hmm. and and more importantly, the least of these, mm -hmm. um, the forgotten, those that, uh, you know. Uh, just are out there, out there, you know. And I think that's just a, it's good to be aware of who your neighbors are and their personal situations. So I think that's, I mean, all I needed to say. There you go. And um, again, just drop a comment below. And I would like to hear your perspective and what you're hearing or what you're doing um, to to better prepare yourself and your family and your neighbors.